the remove invaders exercise is a little tricky. So let's take a closer look at how examples and the template can help you solve the problem. First, let's look at the necessary examples. Because there is an input that is a list of posins, we should write examples for all kinds of list of posins, including empty and cons. Here, I've used a list abbreviation to keep a list with three posins fairly concise. I've also defined constants for some useful posins. I added P3, which is another random posin location, and B4, which is intended as a bullet location that hits only P2 and not P1 or P3. And that makes it easy to write an example where we start with three invaders, not an empty list, and we end up with a shorter but still not empty list of two invaders where P2 is hit by B4 and removed. As we continue thinking about the problem, we might come back and add more examples, but let's move on for now to look at how to follow the right template. This is the template for any generic function that processes a list of posits. Let's copy it and use it as a starting point. I'm going to rename the generic template function name process list of posits to the concrete function name that we're working on, remove invaders. And I'm going to do that in two places, not just in the header, but also in the body of the function. This is going to help a lot, as you'll see. We also want to make sure to add the extra input that is present in our current function. Our remove invaders function is going to take two inputs, not just a list of invader posins, but also a bullet maybe posin. And that input, which we'll call B, might well be useful both in the empty case and in the count case. So I'm just going to add B to both cases now. It's easy to fill in the empty case because if there's no invaders to start with, there certainly shouldn't be any invaders left after we're done removing invaders from an empty list. So as the first example shows, we should just put empty as the answer. The comes case is trickier. It's not immediately clear what kind of processing we might do to the first of the list. It's certainly useful to check if the bullet hits the first of the list. By the way, even when you write the call to hit ha, huh, it's useful to look at the signature of hit ha. Huh. Hit ha huh takes a maybe posin as its first input, and that better be b because b, the our input, is a maybe posin. The second input to hit ha, huh, according to its signature, is a posin, and that can be first ps because ps is not empty and a list of posits. So these are some useful things, but how can we put them together into a working definition? Here we are starting step five of the design recipe, actually writing the definition, and it could look a little daunting, but do you remember the table method? Here the table method can help. I've started to make a table using this beginning student tables tool that I told you about earlier. We have the function we want to define, remove invaders, and I've put in two examples, the empty example and the non-empty example. Now, it's really the non-empty example that concerns us here because that is a trickier one. Now, what I want you to remember is that the template provides us with ingredients that might go into the definition of a function. So if you look at the template that we wrote, it tells us, well, at least two things. First, PS might be useful. We're going to process it somehow. We're not quite sure how yet. Certainly calling hit huh on first PS is a kind of processing. Also, we know something about the rest of the list. The rest of the list is a list of posins, 
and we might well want to remove invaders on it as well. Passing it, probably the same input B. That would be the normal case. It's as if adding the input B is part of renaming process list of contents to remove invaders. So we rename in the header and we also rename in the body. Let's put these two items, the first of the list and the remove invaders of the list, into the table. So I'm going to write down the formula, the first of the list, which is really a formula that only makes sense if the list is not empty. So in the case where the list is empty, we get an error message, but let's not worry about that for now. We don't really need to worry about how to define the empty case anyway. What about the rest of the list? Well, that's also only making sense when the list is not empty. Here's an example of the rest of the list. We started with P1, P2, P3, notated using list abbreviations, and we end up with just a list made of P2 and P3. But the template tells us something else that's really important and helpful. The template says, we probably want to remove invaders on the rest of the list. We probably want to call remove invaders on the rest of the list with the same vote. Now, things get really interesting, both in the beginning student tables tool and just in the table method in general, whether you're doing it on paper or in a computer. We find that we need to know what the result of remove invaders should be for the rest of the list. This is supposed to be a function that removes hit invaders, if any. We know that we are invoking it with the right input types because we can match the input types against the signature. The signature says that this function expects a list of posits and a maybe posit, and indeed that's what we're giving it. A list of posits, the rest of PS, such as the list made of P2 and P3, and the bullet location B, a maybe posit. But what should the function return? When the function is provided with these inputs, what should the result be? We haven't even defined the function yet. That's not something we need to worry about, actually. We just need to trust the signature and the purpose statement of the function, any function we're invoking, even if we haven't designed it yet. Let's write an example so that I can show you what I mean. We want to know what it would mean to call remove invaders with these inputs. In other words, what would the result be if we remove all the invaders hit by B4 from the list B P2, P3? Well, look at the purpose statement and look at the coordinates to find out that B4 hits P2 but not P3. So the result should just be P3, and I will put it in the usual place, the rightmost column for the expected output. Now, this output that I just put in is automatically filled in by the beginning student tables tool in the column for the formula remove invaders on the rest of the list. If you do the table method on paper, you should do the same. When the formula you're guessing includes a call to any function, even the function you haven't finished designing yet, put in what that function should return according to its signature and purpose statement. Okay, but now that we're adding another example, that example is its own row in the table. In fact, we could also add a new example. This new example is the same as the new bottommost row in the table that we just added. In this new example, to figure out what the result of removing invaders on the rest of the list should be, we have to figure out what the result of 
removing invaders on a single element list should be. The result should be just P3 because B4 does not hit P3. And I could figure that out not by looking at the definition of remove invaders because we don't have a definition yet, but just by looking at the signature and interpret statement of remove invaders, which we did write already. So now if you look at the three examples we have, the bottom most three for when the input PS is not empty, you see that in just one of the three cases, is there a check mark? In other words, in one of the three cases, the template has actually done all the work and produced the correct answer. It produced the answer of just removing the hit invaders from the rest of the list. But sometimes this is not enough. For example, look at this row we started with. The removal from the rest of the list gave us just P3, but we don't want just P3. We want the list made of P1 and P3. Similarly, in the bottom of row, removing the invaders from the rest of the list gives us empty because the rest of the list is empty, but we don't want the empty list. In the end, we want a list consisting of P3. So what's going on here? Well, sometimes in the result we want, we don't just want the result of removing from the rest of the list. We also want to add the first of the list. Here, the first of the list is P1, and so we want to add P1. Here, we want to add P3 because the first of the list is P3. This adding is something that we can do using good old function comes. Comes takes a first of a list and the rest of the list and put them together into a longer list. That's what we need, except the first of the list is the first of PS, but the rest of the list is the result of removing invaders from the rest of the list. Now, the result of the comes is correct in the other cases. In this row and in this row, Counting the first of PS onto the result of removing invaders from the rest of PS gives us the right expected result, but not in this row. In this row, if we do the counts, the result will be incorrect. So what's the difference between the rows where we want to do the counts, like this row and this row, and the rows where we don't want to do the counts, like this row? Well, that's what Hitha can help us distinguish. After all, if an invader is hit, then we don't want to return. So we should not count it onto the result we return. But if an invader is not hit, then we do want to do the counting. So what matters is whether the first of PS is hit by B. So you see, by working out this table and crucially putting columns in the table that correspond to expressions provided by the template, we can really start to get a good handle on how to distinguish between different kinds of cases so that we could use a cong to handle each kind of case differently and correctly. Now we know that our program should handle the cons case with an inner cond to distinguish between those cases where the first invader is hit by the bullet and those cases where it is not. Using the table method, we have discovered one correct formula to use when the first invader is not hit and a different correct formula to use when the first invader is hit. That's it. That's a correct design of the remove invaders function. Remember to put all the examples that we added in the course of applying the table method back into our program. The key property of these additional examples is that they are always smaller than the examples you started with. We started with a three person list and then we were prompted by the table method to add lists that are two persons long or one person long. So as the table method keeps inviting you to add more examples, you're going to get smaller and smaller examples, which will be easier and easier to think about. 
And that's another nice thing about using the table method in conjunction with a template like the usual template for processing a list. Now you're ready to do the last exercise, which is a similar function for not removing invaders, but removing the bullet.